Good morning guys, Larry the Tractor Guy here. Hey, it's uh, super windy outside this morning. We got some clouds around and got some thunderstorms maybe passing through later. Hopefully we'll get some rain out of that. It's been pretty dry out here in Southwest Oklahoma. So we'll be looking forward to some rain for sure. Hey, we've got a lot of calls to make today. And so we're gonna get started this morning and see what we get into today. Okay guys, so we're out this morning on a 7730 tractor. Got a customer that's got a 7730 tractor that he does quite a bit of spraying with with this pull top sprayer. And so one of his complaints is that he believes that his front wheel assist, the four wheel drive is staying on on this tractor all the time during road transport. And uh, keep in mind on these front wheel assist tractors, it's pretty important, pretty good uh, practice to turn the front wheel assist off during road transport and or at least put it in auto so that it will turn off on its own after uh, 12 mile an hour, I believe it is. So we're gonna take a look at that real quick and see what we can find. We're in the tractor now to verify the customer's complaint. And looking at the switch here, and this three position switch is either in auto or the middle position is on all the time or the bottom position is turn the front wheel assist off. So I've got the front wheel assist off now and then if I look up in my corner post display, the icon or the display on the corner post is showing that the MFWD clutch is turned on, okay? Even when I have the switch turned off. So I cycled that a few times on and off and on and off and it continues to stay on, okay? So it looks like his four wheel drive is staying on all the time, just like he said. So we're gonna do a little diagnosing here and see what we can find. Looked into the tractor side through the side console display and looked up codes and we found a CCU 524 235.05 code that's active. We went ahead and cleared that code and then started the tractor up and cycled the front wheel assist switch to turn the four wheel drive on and off. And then we generated this same code again, CCU 524 235.05 we've got that code pulled up in service advisor here and it looks like that that code is caused by the chassis control unit the ccu detects that the mfwd solenoid current sensed is too low while ccu driver being commanded on okay to disengage the MFWD clutch, okay? So keep in mind on these MFWD clutch, front wheel assist, four wheel drive clutch, is spring engaged and hydraulically disengaged. And so the solenoid is actually turned on to disengage the MFWD clutch. So there's several things that have to happen with that. Obviously we have to have oil pressure there to disengage the MFWD clutch, but I don't think we're fighting a oil pressure problem, a system pressure problem. I think that we're looking at an electrical problem and or maybe a solenoid failure. So it looks like there's about six diagnostic steps to run through here. We worked down through service advisor step and got to step number five, okay? And it led us to uh, check the CCU MFWD solenoid circuit test. And first plan of action is to disconnect the MFWD solenoid connector. So real quick, I'm going to crawl underneath the tractor and we're gonna take a look at that connector and see if possibly the connector may be unplugged and or if we have a wiring problem. And what I've seen a lot of times on these type of, of circuit problems is uh, if, if these guys are using these tractors in um, fields where there's cotton stalks and or wheat stubble sometimes uh, can kind of run underneath the tractor and 
sometimes damage those wires going to different sensors and solenoids and such so we're going to take a look at that and uh see what we can find we're down here in, we're down here in southwest oklahoma and we're pretty close to the mountains if you can see the mountains in the background and uh man this is this is rattlesnake territory for sure out here and i've seen a lot of rattlesnakes in the past out here in this area and so i'm really like walking around this tractor and looking underneath the tractor making sure that i don't have a rattlesnake anywhere close by before i crawl underneath this tractor so uh keep that in mind if you're ever crawling around underneath equipment or tractors especially in the hay field down here in southwest oklahoma you want to keep your eyes open for these rattlesnakes so we're underneath the 7730 tractor looking at the mfwd clutch housing here Okay, and then back on the back side here is our MFWD four-wheel drive solenoid that sub turns the oil pressure on and off to our clutch assembly inside of the clutch housing here. Okay, and here is our wiring harness and our connector. And so I peeled the insulation off of the wiring harness here. And if you can kind of see that, the insulation on the wires is completely gone and so the wires were pretty much shorted out together okay and so i'm pretty sure that's probably what was generating our code okay and so i'm, I'm gonna kind of separate those wires where they're not making contact and then get up in the tractor and turn my switch on and off and see if that eliminates my code and see if the mfwd clutch will work like it's supposed to now and then if it does we'll go ahead and run a quick ohms test on our solenoid to make sure that it's okay and then we'll repair our harness back in the tractor now we went ahead and cleared our code out through the side console display and we went ahead and operated our mfwd switch on and off and we were kind of watching that in the corner post display there if you can see and it is turning the icon on the display on and off like it's supposed to so i'm pretty sure that was our problem was that that wiring harness and those two wires uh, shorting together and basically not operating that front wheel assist or mfwd on and off solenoid properly i've got my meter hooked up now my voltmeter and i'm running a quick ohms test if you can see my meter there is showing right at about 10.7 ohms of resistance okay and the spec for that by the way is 10 to 14 according to service advisor and that's mostly consistent on most coils and so we're basically just checking the res resistance across that coil okay and what i've done here is i've got a couple of connector leads that I used to test with and then I've got a an old connector that's got a couple of wires in it there that I used to test with and so you can pick those up just about anywhere uh, to use for testing works pretty good well, like I said I wanted to test that that solenoid okay because what I have found in the past on these solenoids especially when we've got wires shorted together that it could have damaged the solenoid and so we could fix the wiring and then shortly after that still have the same failure on the solenoid so it's a good idea just to go ahead and check the ohms run the ohms test on the solenoid before uh, going ahead and replacing the bad wiring we're going to go ahead and fix the wiring harness on this 7730 and talk to the customer and he wants us to go ahead and build him a short harness to plug into that that solenoid okay and so i was taking a quick look at service advisor on the schematic here and it looks like um on the schematic it looks like those two wires that run to that solenoid are kind of built into that backbone harness so to speak and so it runs from the solenoid are actually from the ccu controller over to the solenoid so it's a pretty lengthy it would be a pretty lengthy process to 
replace the harness on the tractor. So we're not gonna go that route. We're just gonna build a short harness real quick to fix that and get this tractor up and running in the field. And I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I've got a various terminals. And so I found a couple of terminals that will work good for that solenoid. And then I've also found a connector housing here that will work really good. It's a little bit different, but it locks in the same way and it'll plug in and seal off really good. And so I've got a couple of pieces of wire here that that I went ahead and pre-cut. Keep in mind when you're doing this, okay, that it does matter which wire goes to which wire. On a lot of these solenoids, it matters. And so we've got to follow that schematic and try to make sure that we get the right wire in the right terminal of the or the right cavity of the connector okay because that does make a difference by the way and so i've um, got my shrink wrap heat gun out here and i've got some um, splice connectors in this box we're going to get a couple of splices and splice this pigtail into the existing harness and we'll use we'll use the heat gun to shrink wrap those ends so that we don't uh, have any corrosion or have any problems later on down the road. Here is my connector end that I use to test the resistance of the coil for the MFWD clutch, okay? And just got my voltmeter plugged into that there. And that works really, really good if you have something like that in your toolbox. I'm looking at the schematic here on Service Advisor and looking at that circuit, okay? And looking at the 553 wire that runs from the x570 x1 ccu connector over to the y501 solenoid connector it looks like just looking at service advisor that that 553 circuit is an orange wire well i didn't have any orange wire so i used a yellow wire okay and if you can kind of see the connector there um, i'm kind of holding that up and looking at my schematic and making sure that i get that 553 circuit in in the a slot in the connector okay and that's kind of the way i have it there in my connector that i'm building here so that i get that driver from the ccu that voltage driver um, to the right side of the mfwd solenoid okay and then just of course i'm using a black wire for my for my ground circuit okay and uh, so keep that in mind that we really need to make sure that we get these wires connected right. And so even looking underneath the tractor, we've got to do a pretty good job of, of going back far enough to find good wire and then also finding the orange wire on the tractor to splice our yellow wire into to drive that circuit. Keep in mind on these style of connectors that you must install the wire through the back side of the connector housing and then crimp your terminal on okay because your terminal has to pull through the face side or the front side of the connector housing to lock in place and so if you crimp your terminal on prior to installing it in your connector housing you can't install it from the back side. So just keep that in mind. You can see we found good wire up above and we spliced our new harness in uh, with these shrink wrap splice terminals here. And we went ahead and used our, our heat gun here and uh, went ahead and heated that up and got that shrunk around the wire really good so that it will seal that off okay and the back side of the connector has a good seal in it as well and so we're gonna get some wiring loom and some tape and tape that up good and put some new wiring loom on and and put this thing back together and go take a quick test run in the field quick recap on the 7730 here that we've been working on with the front wheel assist the mfwd clutch staying on okay we we found the problem was the wiring going down to the solenoid and we went ahead and ran the ohms resistance test on the solenoid and kind of chased the circuit out took a look at that verified the customer's complaint talked to the customer um, we went ahead and repaired the wiring harness installed a 
nice pigtail jumper that that i made here on the truck and installed that secured that we went and ran a quick test run everything seems to be working like it's supposed to and so we're going to return this tractor back to the field and uh, we'll see what we can get into the rest of the day larry the tractor guy signing out